Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making cowboy beans. Now we're going to start with what makes baked beans cowboy beans. Some ground beef and some bacon. I've got about a pound and a half or so of ground chuck here and I'm going to get that started cooking. And I've got five slices of bacon in here. It's about half a pound of bacon. You can chop this bacon up into like little maybe half inch, one inch pieces and throw it right in your ground beef and cook it if you want to especially if you have some really lean ground beef. And I know around here sometimes you can get ground sirloin cheaper than you can regular old ground beef. I don't know why it's so cheap, but sometimes they have the really lean stuff cheap. Buy it for stuff like this and just throw your bacon in with the ground beef and cook it. But because this is ground chuck, I'm probably going to want to adjust the fat a little bit, take most of the fat from the beef out of it because I'm gonna have all the fat from the bacon, I'm gonna stick this in the oven and bake it. And I've just kind of spread my bacon out in a skillet here, and I'm gonna put it in the oven. You can bake it on a cookie sheet, you can fry it in a pan, cook it however you want to, but if you have never baked, made bacon in the oven, baked it, I highly recommend it. It doesn't splatter on you. So let's get this in the oven. Uh, folks have asked me questions about bacon, bacon in the oven, and they've said, well, doesn't it make a mess in the oven? Maybe it does a little bit, but not like it does on top of the stove. Um, and if you cook it in the oven, it doesn't splatter on you or burn you. It doesn't splatter all over the stove top or the walls or the counter or all that stuff. I will never cook bacon on top of the stove again unless I absolutely have to. Anyway, we're going to season our ground beef. And we're just going to cook it till it's brown and like I said, adjust the fat. Put a little pepper, however much pepper you want. A little salt. And again, it's just a taste. You know, just however you fry your ground beef. And I'm going to put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce in mine. It's going to add flavor to the beef itself, but it's going to add flavor to the beans. Alright, now... And again, that's just a taste. I don't know, I maybe did a teaspoon. You want an onion. You can add however much you want. This is like a medium onion. I've diced it up. I have an orange bell pepper that I've diced up. And you can do any color pepper. You can do hot peppers, jalapenos. I don't care if you put ghost peppers in it. I ain't eating your beans, so you do whatever kind of peppers you want. I like the bell peppers, and like I said, any color. Go ahead and add the peppers and the onions to your ground beef while you're cooking it. And that will flavor the beef and it will get those started cooking. Okay, now the other things you need are beans. Um, when I was a kid, baked beans were just canned pork and beans usually, and they had some brown sugar and a little ketchup, a little mustard, a little bacon grease in them. We didn't even get bacon in them. We usually just got bacon grease. If there was some ends and pieces left in the bottom of the box, and if y'all grew up in the country, you know what I'm talking about, or maybe if you just grew up poor, they used to sell the ends and pieces in the grocery store too. If there was some ends and pieces, we might get some ends and pieces thrown in the baked beans. But for nostalgia steak, I have some pork and beans. Um, I also have some white kidney beans and some pinto beans. You can use northern beans, white beans, um, navy beans, the heart beans would be good. You can also start with dried beans to save some money in this recipe. And it's a little healthier to start with dried beans for sure. Um, with the three cans of beans though, I have about half a cup of ketchup and two tablespoons of just regular old yellow mustard. You can also use some kind of barbecue sauce in these if you want to. Especially if you're making these to go with ribs or something like that, you could put barbecue sauce in them that was the same thing you were using on your ribs and it would kind of go together. And you want between a third and a half a cup of brown sugar. Adjust that to suit your taste and also to suit whatever you're putting in the sauce. If you're putting a really sweet barbecue sauce in, you might not want as much brown sugar. 
If you want something healthier, you can use a little molasses and a little honey to sweeten them a little bit with, or you can not sweeten them at all. If you like them tangier, add you a tablespoon or two of just plain old white vinegar to them. White vinegar um, is something that I always keep because it does amazing things to stuff like this, chili, baked goods, pies, cakes, all kinds of stuff like that. Just a little bit. It totally changes the flavor and it changes the texture in baked goods. Well, not so much the flavor in baked goods, but it totally changes the texture and it's far the better. So if you've never tried white vinegar or used it in anything, I recommend getting it and keeping it and putting it in some stuff. It's cheap too. It's a very cheap flavor. And a lot of the sauces have vinegar in them. Um, barbecue sauces, ketchup has vinegar in it. But a lot of the seasoning stuff has vinegar in it. So white vinegar is a really cheap way to season food. And in these times when we're having to cut back, that's kind of a good thing. Now, in cutting back, you can cut this meat back for the three cans of beans. You want anywhere between a pound and two pounds of ground beef. Um, kind of adjust it to suit your taste. Like I said, the bacon, if you don't have bacon and you've got bacon grease saved in your fridge, you can just put a little bacon grease in them if you want to. Or one or two strips of bacon cut up or even leave it whole and lay it on top of it. Sometimes I cut the bacon up and like I said, put it in the beef. And sometimes I leave it whole and lay it on top of the beans. Just do it however you want to. If you leave it in whole strips and lay it on top of the beans, the first few people that get beans are going to be the only ones who actually get the bacon. And they're going to take the bacon, but that's okay. Now these beans are good with everything from hot dogs to a steak. They're any time you're cooking out in the summertime, they're a great side dish to go with stuff that you cook on the grill. Either ribs, hot dogs, hamburgers, steaks, um, your big 4th of July cookouts. They're good for tailgating parties. Uh, you can really make a meal out of just the beans. You don't have to have anything else to go with them very much like you would with chili because it's kind of a similar dish. Uh, most people though do serve them as a side dish. Usually during cookout season, tailgating, barbecues, things like that. And you can bake them in your carry along casserole dish with the lid on it. So if you're going to somebody else's house and you need a take along dish, these are a really good one and people do enjoy them. I don't think I know anybody who does not like cowboy beans. Our meat's almost done, but while we're waiting on it to cook, I want to share Psalm 46, 1 with you. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You know, no matter how bad things get, or how much grief we have to bear, how much pain we have to endure, God is with us through it all, and He will help us through it. And those things in life, the disappointments, the loss, the grief, they become blessings when they help us to grow closer to God, to seek Him. For some of us, it seems like the only time we seek the Lord is when we're in trouble. And a lot of us, I think, find ourselves in trouble because we didn't seek Him before we got there. But no matter what the situation is, seek the Lord. He's there, and He will go with you through it. Okay, this hamburger is pretty much done. It's brown, and you can tell our peppers and our onions are starting to cook. And, you know, like I said, you can use as much onion as you want. You can cut this beet down close to in half if you wanted to or you could put more um, it does have a fair amount of fat in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop it out into the pan that the bacon's in now so let me get that pan out of the oven you can see here this bacon is not done not even close to done but that's okay 
but since it's not done and that's why I left it in strips because I didn't think it would quite have time to get done while I was cooking the uh, hamburger what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna lay it on top of my beans after I put my beans in the pan and I will let it finish cooking on top of my beans but there's plenty enough grease in here out of the bacon to keep everything from sticking when I put the beans in the pan. I'm just gonna scoop this into this pan and then I'm gonna add all the rest of my ingredients to it. There's not a ton of fat in that meat. A lot of times ground chuck has way more fat in it than that. But I am gonna try to get a little of it out because I've got all the fat from the five strips of bacon. And you could take some of that out too if you want to. You don't have to have that much fat in your beans if you're um, kind of on a low fat diet or on a diet at all because fat has a lot of calories in it. But it also has a lot of flavor in it. All right, that probably didn't get rid of more than a couple tablespoons of grease, but it did get rid of that couple tablespoons of fat. Now all we're doing is we're dumping everything else in here and then we'll add the bacon back on top. We're gonna dump our three beans in and you can use all one kind of beans if you want to. I do like the mixed beans. I think it adds to the flavor and it adds to the texture and it just makes them, I don't know, a little more special. And if you're going to all this trouble to make baked beans and putting all this stuff in them, you know, varying the beans, is it helps. Now, if you are in a hurry and you need these quick to take to somebody's house for a get together or you need them quick for at your house, you can get you some Bush's baked beans and cook you some ground beef and mix it up in them Bush's baked beans. Put it in the oven and bake it for a little while. Maybe put a strip or two of bacon on top of it and people will think you have been in the kitchen cooking all day long. But I did not tell y'all that. <laughs> Sometimes though, we need a shortcut. Just mix this up, kind of get everything evenly distributed in there, especially that sugar and stuff. Oh, and I am gonna add just about a tablespoon of vinegar to mine because it adds a little bit of twang. Just a little bit, don't get carried away. And like I said, you don't have to do that. I'm doing lots of things you don't have to do. And there's lots of things you can do that I ain't doing. The big thing about cowboy beans is that it has beans and ground beef. And anything else is kind of up to you. You just make your own variety of cowboy beans. You can cook these in a crock pot. In a crock pot, you're gonna wanna cook them, oh, three, four hours on high. You can cook them, I'm gonna put these in the oven on 350, cook them about an hour and a half um, to two hours. Unless they dry out, you're not gonna overcook them. The longer you cook them, the better the flavor is gonna be. You just don't wanna let them dry out. And you can cook them in a Dutch oven on top of the stove. They're a good camping dish. And if you're camping, you're definitely gonna be doing the Dutch oven probably on top of the stove or maybe on a fire or a grill but that works too. And I think I've about got them stirred up there. Now, if the bacon had been cut up in pieces, of course it would have been mixed in here, but I'm just gonna take it, my half cooked bacon, and lay it on top of this. And then I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it cook for a couple of hours. This bacon kind of works as a timer too. When it starts to get real brown, if it's sitting up on top here, you know the beans are done. <laughs> now here's another little tip too. If you're waiting on people to get there and the bacon starts getting too done and you've got it on top like this, flip it over. And it can stay in the oven for an extra 20, 30 minutes if you need it to. Gosh, I got enough bacon to totally cover the top of my skillet. All right. Now let's just stick these in the oven for an hour and a half, two hours. And in about an hour and a half, they come out in your fancy red Dutch oven. <laughs> when they're done, the liquid in them, the soup in them should be really thick. The top should be kind of brown like this. If your bacon's on top, it should be nice and brown and well done. Now it's not gonna be crispy if you put it on top because it has all that liquid 
from the beans but it should be brown and it should look well done and these like I said are great with any kind of cookout a uh, summertime meal you can make them ahead of time and take them places just warm them up there it's fine to make them the day before and then just warm them up the day of or bake them the day of make them mix them up put them in your Dutch oven or your carry along casserole dish and just bake them the day that you're going somewhere if I was gonna make them ahead I would definitely cook the bacon chop the bacon up in pieces and cook it and mix it in the beans or just do the bacon grease I mean you know especially if you're in a hurry thank y'all so much for joining us again in the hillbilly kitchen if you have not already please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave share all of our videos with your friends and until next time remember to put god first <music>